Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are still working on this staircase. In the first two videos, we painted and installed a new light fixture, and we started working on these sidewalls right here. And today we are starting to work on the railing. I'm so excited because I need to make these stairs safe again for my family, and I think it's gonna look great. Okay, I wanna start with the newel posts. I grabbed this four by four, it's not pressure treated. And so I'm gonna cut that and those are gonna be the start of our newel posts. Okay, so this is how the newel posts are going to go. They're gonna sit inside of this wall like this, but before we screw them in, we have to do something to the bottom first. So I left this two by four lip right here. So we have to notch out the back of this post so it can sit on top of that lip, just like this. And then we will screw straight through here and then here at the bottom. So hopefully it should be nice and secure. Before I install the newel post, I wanted to go ahead and give them a really good sanding. So I'm starting off with a 120 grit sanding pad, and that's really going to knock off any of the like surface imperfections and just smooth everything down. And then I will go in with a finishing sanding pad, which is a 220 grit, and it's going to make it so smooth to the touch, which will make our paint finish go on really well. Okay, everything is all sanded, nice and smooth. So for things like this, uh, I'm gonna use either wood filler or Bondo because these are going to be painted. So these top pieces right here, I, I wanted simple, but I wanna do a little bit of something right here just to make it not look like a four by four post. Okay, see the difference between this and then just this plain flat top? It just gives it just a little bit more of a decorative feel, more of a actual newel post feel than just a plain old four by four. To install these newel posts, I am just putting them in place and then I'm using my drill bit to create a wider circle hole and then I'm going to go in with the actual screw and then later I'm going to come back in and fill in that circle with some plugs so you'll never know that it, the screw was ever even there. Okay, the newel posts are officially installed and I am officially back from vacation today and I wanted to talk to you guys about a product that a company sent me before I left and I took it on vacation with me because I wanted to try it out 
and see what I thought before I told you guys about it. And it is from a company called Lane Woods Jewelry. And they sent me a beautiful moissanite ring. This is the Harper ring. This is in the oval in two carats. And it is so pretty. I hope this camera is picking up how sparkly it is. And this moissanite is super affordable. So pretty, I'm gonna be wearing it all the time. All right, now back to the stairs. Now that the newel posts are installed, we need to install the two top boards that are just, they're not structural, they're just decorative. They're gonna cover up this wood right here and make everything look a lot prettier again. Okay, this part was a little bit technical and it was trial and error, so I didn't go into a lot of detail, but I took these boards that used to be like way up here, and when we moved this back down, I took those same boards and I notched it out right there and I trimmed them on the side, and then I notched them right here to where they would fit with the newel post. Now I also cut this, I mitered this at an angle, so when we go in, with our front pieces, see how this is angled? And then this is also angled. It's gonna fit together like that. And once we caulk, it'll all look like one seamless piece down. And we'll fill these with these plugs like this and caulk and paint. It'll all look like one big piece. I tore up all of this drywall right here when I was demoing, so I'm just gonna cut a straight line down and go back in with a fresh little piece of drywall. I'll mud over the top of it and everything, but just to give me kind of a clean slate to start from in this corner right here. Okay, we've got these top pieces and these front trim pieces right there. They're all in, nailed in. Now, at this point, I'm not going to move on to like the handrails or the balusters because I want to do all of the trim work on this and get everything painted before I move on to that, which is not as much fun, but needs to be done. I thought I was done with the drywall work, but I guess I'm not. And I gotta say guys, I love caulk so much. You see how that cut was not perfect, but you just add some caulk and it looks like it's perfect. Once we paint over it, you'll never be able to tell. And then I'm just using some wood filler to go in with the little impressions that my nail gun makes. And I'll sand those down and we will be ready to go. For these smaller little pieces like that, I am using this Minwax wood filler. I've talked about this on my channel before. It goes on pink, you can see right here, and then it dries to this tan color. Whenever it's completely dry, then you know you can sand it because I'm very impatient, and if you try to sand it too soon, it will gunk up on your sander. So we've got 
all of the smaller pieces wood filled but for these bigger sections like this which is just a few spots I am going to use another product that I've talked about on my channel before which is this Bondo it's two parts that you mix together and it dries very very fast and very hard so when we put it in there we'll be able to sand it off and it'll be completely smooth If you've seen some of my videos before, you've probably seen me use this spray texture, but if you're here for the first time, this is a drywall secret weapon. It is such a like necessary thing whenever you're doing drywall to match the texture that's already there. It comes in a can and it's adjustable so you can match it to your current texture that you already have. You just wait for it to dry a little bit. I waited about eight minutes and then I just take this little flat tool right here and just knock it down to the knockdown texture of the drywall and then it blends right in with what was already there. Okay, everything is sanded, really smooth and good to go. But before we do our final caulking, we have to add some trim pieces on the side. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So I just picked up these little wood trim pieces and just cut these ends at an angle so that they would fit like this and they will hide all of the gaps underneath there and it will go all the way up right there and we're just going to shoot those in with a nail gun. So I'm just adding this last piece of trim in here and then I'm going to go in and wood fill all of the little holes that my nail gun made. So when you're actually wood filling something, you don't put it completely flush. I actually put the wood filler above the wood because as it dries, it's going to shrink down into that hole. And so if you only fill it to the top of the hole, when it shrinks, you're still gonna have an impression and you're gonna have to do it twice. So it's better just to overfill it the first time. So you only have to fill it once. And then I am just adding even more caulk to make everything seamless, everything completely built in looking, and then it will be finally time to paint everything. I've had a few questions recently about how I plan my projects. And when I first sit down to start thinking about a project that I want to do, I kind of lay out all of the steps that I would need to do and also the materials that I would need and kind of weigh the costs and where I can spend and where I can save money. And these newel posts were somewhere that I could definitely save money. So the banister for these stairs, it's going to be oak, which is a pricier wood. In order to buy oak newel posts, it would have been about $75 each for these posts. And I was able to make these posts for $7 each. So that saved me tons of money to do that because if I tried to stain, they're not oak, they're a different kind of wood. So if I tried to stain these posts to match the oak banister, it wouldn't look the same. 
So that's why I ended up painting the newel posts because I was not going to be able to match them to the banister. So I decided to splurge on the banister, save on the newel posts. So that's something that I keep in mind whenever I'm planning projects is the overall cost and what is important to me to spend money on and what I'm willing to save on. Okay, let's talk about this because I'm thinking it, you're probably thinking it, this is too much white. I painted everything white and I don't like it, but I have a design in my head like this is the end of the white, trust me. So I have this beautiful red oak banister that's gonna go like this that we're gonna stain to match the floors. Then we also have these black metal balusters they're gonna go to and also we have new wood stair treads they're gonna go across so while everything may look all right all white right now trust the process because this is the end of the white and this is where we're gonna stop for today's video because this is literally all i could get done this week between getting back from vacation and just seems like all of us got sick or something. So this process is taking forever, but thanks for sticking with me guys. Make sure that you're subscribed because I'm really excited about next week's video when we start adding some life back into this staircase. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.